Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 10 of my Football Manager 2016 Let's Play with Ingolstadt. And there's great news here. Uh, Ingolstadt have proposed contract renewal talks because obviously I've done pretty well so far this season. But it's interesting that it came after a couple of negative results and we had a few wins uh, before the previous episode. But yeah, we're just going to accept the current vision. I'm definitely not going to yeah, argue or anything like that. I'm just going to accept uh, what they offer me. Uh, what's the yeah duration? Three years uh, to the end of 2018, uh, that season anyway. So I'll suggest the terms and finalize. I'm just happy to uh, yeah have a few more years on my contract and then we can push on and the players will be confident uh, with that as well. And also before a big game against Bayern Munich away from home in the league. Uh, hopefully that can be a confidence booster for the club. So there we go, guys. That's all tied up. A two-year contract extension. I'm um, set to extend my stay at the club until June 2018. Very happy about that uh, as we can see a future for the club. I'll go uh, with this quick phone call. I'm just going to say passionately, I'm delighted to sign the deal. And there we go. Very exciting times for the future of the club, I think, because the board can real. I know it's still early in the season, kind of, but actually, if you look at the fixtures and you go like that to see that many games left in the season, it will start getting into January soon enough. It's going towards the end of November. And yeah, the season will, like when I start recording like the next few episodes and uploading them, it's going to get closer towards the end of the season. But that's what I mean. The board are pretty confident uh, that we're going to survive in this division now with how we've performed and already how many points we've picked up and how other teams are going and the difference uh, we are between them. So uh, it's really good. Probably, <laughs> maybe there might be a bit of hope I say maybe still fight for six or something like that, but a game against Bayern Munich, like if we get a loss, which, yeah, it will be amazing if we just avoid, like a draw would be, it will seem like a win against Bayern Munich with all the good players they have. So I want to see how we perform though, regardless of the result, I want to see how we can compete against them, as I mentioned, regardless of the actual end result. But guys, unfortunately, it goes from bad to worse here, coming off a couple uh, bad results, and now we get an injury to Pascal Gross, another injury as well, so that's what I mean, a couple last results, not the best, pick up some injuries as well, so he's going to be missing, our best player really is going to be missing for Bayern Munich, so if you round those injuries up, we're going to bring on Alfredo Morales, it might be good timing because he actually wants to play more. Might as well just bring Roger in there, make some changes that I would have done. And uh, see, we've got so many players to come in. So that's the good sign. But look, we've got Kachunga, Gross, and Pledel all injured. Th probably three of our best players, you could argue, if not all of them are. I think they're definitely in the top five, at least from their performances so far this season. So that's really disappointing that injuries are striking us now. And I hate when it's just a training injury, just in training. What happened? He just sustained a twisted ankle it just during a training session, just out of nowhere like that, not during a game. It just... I, I don't know how they come up with them, like in Football Manager. Obviously, there's some kind of odds, like a roll of the dice or something. There's like odds of a player getting injured, and it's just... It's very unlucky that that would happen. But either way, I don't want to complain about it, but just before two days... Oh, God, two days before the buying game, that hurts to miss our key player. Now, guys, it is time for this big game. I'm a little bit scared, a little bit nervous, but also I'm excited for this game to see how we can compete against Bayern Munich. It's a really good chance. Like, we've played against teams like Borussia Dortmund, what, like Leverkusen. If you look, obviously, yeah, Dortmund, Leverkusen, not doing the best, but if you look at the teams as a whole, like who has the best players, I think, yeah, Dortmund and Leverkusen should be a bit up there. And I felt we competed against them. But then there's Bayern Munich. They are the next level. So we've had to make some rotations here because of the injuries. And I'm actually going into play with two ball-winning midfielders on the support role with Roger and Alfredo Morales. And we're going to see how we go. See, always uh, having to make uh, rotations almost week in and week out for a lot of games. Uh, we just have to rotate the team for different reasons. 
uh, not too long ago was fitness reasons to drop players to keep him fit. Like when I, I brought in Tobias Levels for a game and rested uh, Danny DaCosta and he's ready for this game most definitely. Uh, but now it's because of injuries. So I had to make a tactical change as well, playing with two ball in your midfielders now. So yeah, it's, it's important. It almost feels good when you do that though, opposed to when you used to, I'm not sure other people, though, when you have one specific tactic and you don't really change too much, but these days in Football Manager, you always have to alter things and it takes away from ever, like, down, well, like if people like download a tactic or something, you can't really do that anymore. I know probably people still do that because people ask me, can you put your tactics for download? But I wouldn't suggest to do that. You, know, you just got to build your own and you know, work off from there and make, because you do have to make changes. You can't stick with the same uh, kind of formation. Well, you can... Uh, I still want to maintain this kind of formation, but you have to change up roles, instructions, player specific instructions as you go on. You can't just you can't like leave it set and forget. For example, our striker as well, target man with Pekka. But when our other player comes back, alias Kachunga, you change the role uh, to a more suitable one for him. So it always has to be rolling like that. You have to keep making changes uh, for the player's roles. Uh, that will suit them. Uh, that's a really big thing. So I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, Stefan Lex, I brought him back into the first team now. I'll give him number 18, I suppose. Uh, that's the next highest available after 13. So uh, we'll go with that. And or well, next lowest available, I should say, with the number. But anyway, this is a good opportunity. <laughs> I say it's a good opportunity because like Verde Bremen, they've played a game. But we're gonna if we get a point from this game, it will be a great achievement. Of course, it will be hard, but yeah, like, what can you expect? Look at that team. Lewandowski as the striker, Douglas Costa on the left wing, Muller on the right, then central midfield with Mario Goetze, Vidal, and then Philip L That almost feels like my Manchester United team I created in FM15 because I, I remember playing Goethe in center midfield. It's just amazing. And Bernat as well. I remember I signed him. That you got Boateng at the back, Bernatti up. Yeah, Rafinha, maybe a slight weakness, but that's very minimal. If he came into our team, he'd probably be one of the better players. And look, they've even got Robin on the bench. They've got Thiago, Xabi Alonso, just uh, Javi Martinez, all those good players that don't... All those players on the bench would come into our team as our best players. That's how good Bayern Munich are, and it makes it really hard for you. So opposition instructions applied there, and we're going to go assertively... And we are going to say we're huge underdogs, so there's no pressure on you to succeed. Go out there and show everyone what you've got. So many people are going to be watching this game because it's Bayern Munich. I don't mean you guys. I mean actually in this situation, like a Bayern Munich game. So it's a big occasion for my players to step up and hopefully they can do that. All the players on the pitch, they've all got positives about them. I think they're all good players in their own way. Obviously compared to Bayern Munich, not as good but they've all got their specific attributes and the style of players they are, and I'd like to see what they can do here. We start with the ball there, but we gave it away uh, very, very quickly, unfortunately. Uh, it's not a good start, but you, know, you just want to want to ease into the game here. Obviously, Bayern Munich is going to have that possession, without a doubt, as always, but I'd like to think we can defend well and we can prevent as many chances as possible if we are going to get anything from this game. Lecky, oh, he could take this. Maybe his pace could be important in this game, but really well defended there. That's what I mean. They get through, though. It's Lewandowski. It's Muller. Satna. Force him wide. Good save. And that was good defending as well. A good chance for the goalkeeper to save it there uh, because of how we forced him in a low percentage chance with uh, good marking, uh, good defending as well. So, yeah, it's a good start here. It's a good start. Obviously, yeah, Bayern is dominating. That's always going to happen. So, I'm going to say passionately encourage just again lift their confidence a little bit a few players are nervous just give them some confidence but they've got a corner here it's burnout he's by himself he why did the pitch fucking flip oh my god this is not good that is not good that's really it's disappointing when i think about it try and give an honest opinion that it's disappointing to concede but why is he by himself what's that gun doing come on oh my god that doesn't genuinely happen. Like, my marking for the defending set pieces, corners, all of that, 
that never usually happens. They must have an extra man. So that's, again, their doing. But I like to think the intelligence of the game, like they'll allow one of my, my players outside of my instructions to go mark that extra player going in the box. I'd like to think that's normal, but uh, yeah, that's very annoying. If we lose because of that, it just, uh, that, that that's really annoying. I hope we can get a goal back. Oh, no. Because that will deplete our confidence even more. And Morales, I was scared he was going to get another yellow there. Is Doug look... <laughs> they can't stop them. But Matip does really, really well there. Roger, maybe we can forge a counter-attack here. Peckart, <laughs> try and win the header. But Boateng is so good in the air as well. Lecky going to try and get past. Not going to be easy. Bernat's still a good left back. It's green. Play the ball through. Lecky. Lecky. Come on. Peckart, finish. Oh, no. We're in a good opportunity there, but we do get a corner now. Can we take a corner opportunity? Kihoon puts it in. It was working his way back to him, but Lam clears, and Douglas Costa got to be... Oh, okay. And the highlight stops there, but I thought that could have been a good chance. Interesting. We've had the only clear-cut chance of the game, but we'll have to say aggressively, expect to see much better. Uh, but that really hurts, because it would be nil-nil if it wasn't for that marking on the corner a player left by himself and as I mentioned that doesn't generally happen because I think my settings uh, for defending quarters uh, for the defending corners is normal so and also because you haven't seen that kind of you know, goal conceded or that kind of defending from a corner before so far this season it's obviously uh, yeah Bayern they know they're a good team and they can create those chances and there's another one there just coming in after half time uh, it's what you expect. There's no point. There's no point, yeah, getting mad right now. Usually I say that in some games when I'm about to lose, but this even more so because, yeah, it's Bayern Munich. <laughs> you cannot have any expectation at all to get anything from the game, or then you will just get disappointed. Okay, a highlight right away. But we just, we he threw it right at him. Ah, so annoying. You can still get frustrated at it, even if, yeah, you don't expect to win. But, <laughs> come on. Morales now. Kihoon. And their defense is really good as well, how they're set up. Look at that. You have Lam in defensive midfield. It's impossible to get past him, really. He's so good. And look at all the men they've got forward. It's Rafinha. He puts a ball in, and Douglas Costa should finish this. Douglas Costa sets up for Muller, and Nyland makes a good save. I've seen that a few times so far this season in games. Maybe have been losing. But Nyland, like, after he's conceded a few goals, he still made important saves, like where you'd maybe expect to concede. So I'm almost thinking of making some early subs, but also we lost key players through injury as well. Two midfielders, not really good at all. But... I hope we don't get smashed. If it's 3-0 or less, it will be acceptable. But if it's 3-0 now, it might be a bit hard to avoid that. But good defending. But now nah, I've got to have... Oh, we've got to keep our eye on our next game. And when's that next game? Yeah, uh, Gladbach away from home. And they're last, actually. So we've got to be eyeing a victory there. So uh, we're going to take off Morales. We'll bring on uh, Malangu, I suppose. We'll put him more as a box-to-box -box midfielder. And then anyone else with a bit lower condition, Julian Green. I might just leave him in, though, because he hasn't played too much. Just give him some yeah, game time. And Pekka, I'll bring in Lex. I haven't played him too much. It's an occasion to play him a bit more. And you might play him as, what, a poacher? I guess poacher. Maybe that's his best role, I suppose. Uh, Stefan Lex. C. Oh, he's not natural. I might try Lecky. My Lecky, he's slightly better. See how it improves there. So, yeah, we'll try that a little bit. And we'll see how we go. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it like that for now. Hopefully, we can show some signs. It's always hard to show signs, obviously, uh, against Bayern Munich to create your own chances because they are so good. <laughs> they are so good uh, with the players they have. And like I mentioned, the players they have on the bench, all of those could have been starting and it would be a similar result. But they're playing probably their strongest starting eleven. Maybe bar a couple players. Oof. And Lewandowski. Arguably the best striker in the world. Oh, and they put a ball in. I'm thinking here. If we can defend for the rest of the game and defend well, 2-0 wouldn't be an embarrassment. And who knows? Maybe we could sneak a goal. 
but they've got a chance. He alarm and Nyland, he takes that very well. So once again, he does make an important save. So we'll go team talk. See, some players are still motivated, so that's a good thing. I'm just going to say... I'm going to say demand more. and ho I just want to see... Uh, for the players, I, I want to see them score a goal and it'll be it'll be great for them that's more than anything i'd love for them just to get a confidence booster out of that so here a throw in da costa this time he finds lex this time maybe Malangu. we get that goal come on that's his first of the season maybe a bit of a confidence booster we need that because the morale would be really depleted if we were to go into the next game with without scoring a goal and having a bad loss but that brings it back a lot to 2-1 yes that's really good that oh, i'm so happy what a sub as well bringing malangu on didn't take him long to score that goal i'm happy i'm happy for him i'm really happy and happy for the team they deserve that goal and how about nyland as i said he's got 7.3 Apart from Malangu, he's been uh, the best player here today. Kihoon will take off and bring Jose Carlos, and we'll just leave him a uh, winger. And we'll confirm that. So if the game it does, if we manage to end it like this, 2-1, of course we don't get anything from the game in terms of points, but it's a much better result than you probably would have expected. Away from home, playing at Bayern Munich's ground. Like, oh, yeah, to not get smashed is a massive achievement because they can smash teams like 3-4-0 even 5-0 potentially, so nah, that, I'm happy with this performance, uh, if they score again to make it 3-1, maybe slightly disappointed, but 2-1, I don't think I'll ever be happier without getting a point from a game, like in a game that I've actually lost, I don't think I would be this happy, oh, it's a corner for them, Lecky, maybe we could count Lecky, get, oh, come on, go for it, <laughs> because they might have the opportunity here, or we might, oh, imagine, no, it goes straight to them, Boateng, they're going to create opportunity, it's Robin, look, he comes on and shows his skill, oh, Roger, over top, Green, Lex, oh, maybe, oh, slight hope, I don't think, yeah, I don't think nothing's going to come from this, it's Martinez now, again, he came off the bench, it's Goza, and that is the game, oh, my players did their best, I'd like to think, and also, something else I'd like to think, maybe on another day, we could have pulled a 1-1 out of that if they didn't score that first goal. But, yeah, like I said, that's why I, I, I judge it off the, the, the actual performance. I'm really happy with the performance that we show today. I can't, I can't fault the effort. Exactly. You played as best as they could. I think they played as best as they could. Uh, uh, judging what happened during the game, but also how <laughs> Bayern Munich, you can't doubt how many shots they had and the players they have. So for us, the actual performance was excellent. I can't fault that. They did the best they could. So lads, right here, we do get to offer for Bregier. Uh, I offered him. I transfer listed him. He came to me wanting to discuss personal matters. And again, uh, he actually came to me saying that it might be time to leave. So I said, I'll sell him. And then he accepted that. And I offered 500k, just slightly above his value. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just say, yeah, not in the club's first team plans. Um, as I've mentioned previously, physically good. But for me, mental, the defensive uh, mental attributes and the technical defensive attributes are just simply not high enough. Uh, so a bag 500k for him. He signed in real life for free. So then to get him, get 500k, make that profit for the club, um, I think uh, that is pretty good. So maybe we can use that. I don't know when it comes to January. Uh, maybe potentially a uh, free transfer signing, like approach to sign on someone's contract. Uh, we'll just have to see who is available. So guys, I also notice here that Fenerbahce, they're looking to the Austrian star that we have. I'm not sure if he's a star, Lucas Hintersier, uh, but they're interested in him. He's wanted, and I don't have him transfer listed, so this is a good opportunity. He's valued over a million, so I might put a sneaky offer, a sneaky offer two million. And if we get that for him, that would be really, really healthy, especially if we do sell the other player we're trying to sell. Uh, maybe we could go for a signing in January, but I think he will have to leave. You get 500k, probably not enough to sign someone really, really good. But then if we have almost, yeah, towards 3 million to play with, maybe uh, 2.5 million to play with, maybe we could bring in someone decent. And maybe for our overall balance just at the same time. Because that's rapidly depleting. And well, there we go. It is not 
as much as I wanted initially. I put the two million in there. Uh, any other two millions? Or they're all just one million. So I think when you get that many offers, when it's not the actual number you wanted, you can tell that's probably the most you're going to get for the player. Like we didn't offer one million. We offered two million. But like all these yeah, teams came in. I'll just reject Malaga. And I'll just say the offer's not good enough because they're not offering it straight up. And I'm actually going to accept the rest. One million. See, some decent teams offered him. like, But there's yeah, there's not too many. Well, Schalke. I wouldn't mind Schalke. That's a lot of teams. And Bournemouth in the Premier League. But yeah, I just don't think he is... He's got decent attributes, but I just don't think he's required. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept all of these. And there you see, like I said, went ahead to accept all the 1 million offers up front. There was only the one we rejected because it wasn't up front from Malaga. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, we can get that. Well, we get 1 million uh, for Hintasir and then 500k for Bregier. And we may have a little bit to play with uh, to make a signing in January. Actually, a permanent signing, not a guy on approach to sign uh, for next season. Uh, we'll just have to see uh, the situation. So, lads, here's the match preview for the upcoming game against Gladbach, again, away from home. They're going to be wanting to win this. Again, checking if they have any injuries or not. What's their case? They have no injuries whatsoever. And you look at their team, it's a decent team. They've got some good players. But because they're not on great form, their morale is terrible at the minute. And our morale is pretty good. Surprising that we've lost the last two games, considering uh, you're looking at our morale. It doesn't seem like we've lost games. But because of the output we had, the team were really happy. Of course, they knew they lost, obviously. But it was the performance they were happy with and that I was happy with. Because, yeah, they didn't get smashed. And was a very good, very good performance. I was happy. I know, yeah, Bayern Munich clearly dominated it, but it wasn't a just a damaging scoreline, which is really, which is a good thing. So Danilo Suarez is going to be starting this game. I noticed last couple of games, uh, Marcus Sutner hasn't been at his best. He was consistently getting over a seven rating for this season, but last few games he's dropped off a little bit. So maybe he needs a rest at the same time. Uh, we may be making signings. Obviously, yeah, we're selling a couple players. Well, hopefully we are. And then once we get into January, we can make some moves. And that's the thing about the Bundesliga. Uh, you can see there, look at that break. The last game in December is on the 19th. And there isn't the next game until the 23rd of January. So I might have to... It really depends on the situation when I'm going to be signing players and how I do end up signing them. But there may be just one episode that surrounds making signings in January, uh, we may have to see, but obviously, yeah, you'll have to wait for that, but yeah, we'll finish off this game, and then we'll have two next games, or maybe I'll play that one game there against Colne, and then, yeah, we'll go through, push into January, yeah, I think that will probably be best, it'll be a one, it'll be a one game episode, but this is the team we're going in with, Thomas Pecker, he has been all right, five goals in eight games, it's, his goal scoring tally is looking decent, but I think he has to score today, because don't forget, he's still got three goals from that hat-trick. And May Malangu is going to be deep line playmaker. Roger's going to stay as the Boeing midfielder, said Danilo Suarez. Uh, Diego Colotto comes back in as well. Just a few rotations in there. I'm really happy with the amount of games Key Hoon has been able to play. Maybe he's dropping slowly in his quality or his performances, actually. So I'm going to think... Oh, I'm just, I'm thinking a little bit. Um, I don't think Stefan Lex did terrible in the last game. Actually, I'm going to try starting him. Yeah, right winger. We'll try that. Kihoon, he's got a great, yeah, definitely a great cross on him. So he can always just pull out that good cross. And obviously to Peckhart, that is, yeah, that's to his advantage. Oh, there's one thing I said I was going to change previously, wasn't I? We'll go instructions and with the crosses, we'll float them more. Obviously to Peckhart, he's a danger in the air. So we're going to say passionately, We've been on a bad run lately, so go out there and impress me. Okay, no reactions. <laughs> we'll go. I just have faith in you then. And hopefully, there we go. A few defenders happy. Now for the midfielders, only one really, Julian Green. I know probably not his most natural role, attacking midfield, but we've been training him that mate, exactly for this situation now. We get an injury to a couple midfielders. I actually was playing or planning on playing Gross in attacking midfield after we got that other injury. Uh, to our key center attacking midfielder. We'll just go back to show you the injuries uh, we had 
yeah, Thomas Pledel. I was planning Gross, but then he got injured. So that, yeah, kind of confused me a bit on, or not confused me, but really changed my plans. But he will go assertively. I have faith in you for Thomas Peckhart. Listens keenly. So let's go on. This will be, it's always hard. Always hard to get a win away from home for the team we are. But if we can, it'll be massive. And it's a good opportunity against this kind of team who are completely bereft of confidence. So here we've got the ball. It's Danilo. It's a good yeah, chance for him to show what he's got as an attacking fullback. And Danilo whips in a great cross. Lex should have scored. Oh, no. Would I rue that chance of bringing Lex on? But again, would have Lecky scored anyway? He's been missing opportunities. It's just, that's the quality. That's the quality we're lacking. Malangu. Now it's Roger. Come on. We need a goal here. Come on, Roger. It's Danilo. Oh. What a great opportunity. I was just wondering, <laughs> yeah, it chose his name, uh, Danilo Suarez. Yeah, it says Danilo opposed to Suarez. He prefer does he prefer to be called Danilo opposed to Suarez? Please drop in your comments because uh, I don't really watch Ingolstadt play in real life, so I'm not sure Yeah, what the commentators generally call him, but uh, please let me know. Here's Schultz who puts it in. It's Azard. Oh, got to be careful. And the good clearance there. And Pekka. Oh, look at that strength against Nordvit. The ex-Arsenal man. Pekka. Oh, good challenge that was. Got to be honest. Schultz tries and clear. But again, uh, Danilo Suarez. Uh, he, good, so his positioning's really good, isn't it? And then he's got, obviously, that attacking and technical ability about him. I love those fullbacks. Oh, no, Green. You can't lose the ball in midfield like that because it's going to result in a goal. Watch this. Azard, Dermich, it's a goal. I just knew. When you give, when you make an error like that, it always seems to lead to a goal. It's like there's a higher chance of them scoring opposed to them just creating a chance themselves um, when they're passing and everything like that. If you make an error and then they counter, it just, yeah, it's like the game wants you to, it wants to make you pay for making an error and just, I don't know, that's just what I feel. That's why I knew that was going to be a goal 100%. I, I knew it. <laughs> That's why I was saying it was going to be a goal uh, before it happened. I, I just could tell because uh, it's definitely not the first time it happened. Okay, they're creating a lot of chances here. Oh, they're chasing a win and they could get it. Oh, that's so unlike. I, I absolutely hate those. I hate those. Granite Xhaka, again, first goal of the con uh, we concede, first goal of the season. The player scores his first of the season against us. As always, I hate these though. When you like make the interception and your goalkeeper's out of position because he was kind of anticipating, and then of course your sliding challenge, it will go straight to the opposition. Oh, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. And Andreas Christensen picks up an injury. We're playing against a team that has just been terrible this season, and well, we are losing two nil. And, but don't forget, we've lost a couple of our key players, and I think that's showing in our performance. Show me something else. Felt like I've said that all before. But hopefully, yeah, we can see something. And you can tell this is not a great performance if you compare to the Bayern Munich game. At least we showed a little bit more. We did end up getting that goal. And Peckart, nah. Thought it could be an early chance, but not to be. I'm almost getting the feeling, was it our first couple games of the season? Like that one episode, I think I had two bad losses. It feels like that. Ah, oh, and just those little chances like that, not quite going our way. Maybe Lex, oh, not a great pass. It was still to Malangu, but not to his advantage. Let he wins a corner, I guess, but they just wasted that chance still, even though we get a corner. Kihoon, Matsip. We're still having chances, but maybe we're going to have to make an alteration. Uh, firstly, uh, we'll go attacking, and then we're going to have to make a change. Lecky's going to come on. Lex, sorry, mate, you have to go off. Not good enough. Kihoon, we'll think about dropping him for this game. Uh, just didn't show it once again. And we'll just, yeah, winger for Carlos on the left side. And, yeah, we'll just make those two changes for now. And the wingers will go on attack as well. And they're both uh, kind of pacier, dribbling types in Lecky and Carlos. So it'd be better if they, yeah, just uh, be a bit more attacking. Run at the defense and saying that runner defense, that's default on anyway. Uh, but, 
yeah, float crosses. We'll stay. We'll still keep that with Pekka. We'll hit early crosses in and we'll shoot on sight. We just got to be taking these opportunities now and with a higher tempo and more direct passing, and even roam from positions. Just got to create a bit, and we'll confirm the changes. Matthew Lecky assertively a lot more to come from you he gains confidence hopefully the same for jose carlos yes uh, well he looks happy he feels he gets along well with me which is really important but it does look like we are facing another defeat it is away from home i know so you can't expect it to do to be too easy and i've already been surprised and i'm sure you are as well that's uh, Gladbach were last and after this game it doesn't look like they're going to be anymore as Triore and they're going to get it oh I swear some of the goals have scored in this game is they've take a breather take a breather oh my god this is ridiculous goal oh like it's a save it goes right to him and he just has to tap it in oh they're so frustrating those goals to concede like, I feel like I can't... I just want to make my other sub now and not worry about it for the rest of the game to end this peck art. No. What do we do? What do Danny DaCosta, I'll just take him off. Like, I don't really... I can't see, yeah, who I'm going to bring on and it's not really going to change anything. So there we go. He gains confidence, but nothing's going to happen. Okay, they've got another corner. And they're probably going to take... It's 4-0! 4-0! Oh, I really have to be prepared for this. I have to be prepared for last. It's probably not going to be the last game. Uh, we've had games like this earlier in the season, but it was like in one episode, wasn't it? Like I said, it was just a couple bad games we had, and then we went on a good run. But maybe it's time where we're going to get a couple of negative results again when we're missing our key players. We're missing two key midfielders, as I talked about already. And that affects your yeah creative ability. And Lecky, oh, he scores. We score a goal at least. Uh, maybe that'll give him some confidence. Uh, I'm not sure, but this is a very disappointing. I sure I did see this as a great opportunity to get a result, at a minimum a draw. I thought it could be a win though. It just I I actually have we haven't been that good in recent games against teams that are really low in the table. But I know yeah, glad they're a good team. They could have a fifth. It's another goal conceded from a corner, and I've been working on defended uh, defending set pieces in training. So how about that logic? What's the point? I've been working on it for a couple of weeks and it doesn't help when no one's actually marking the players even though I have it in the settings. I have them marking, like ma man marking from defending corners. But they just don't do it. <laughs> oh my, it's 5-1. What a depleting result. Even though we've had players that had good games. That's the crazy thing. Look, Julian Green. Uh, see, I might look at, like, our weak links that I would have thought, like, with the players we're missing in those positions, center attacking midfield and center mid, like Pascal Gross, that's not where the players who were playing there instead, that's not who played badly. It was the crap defending and the, the attack, apart from Julian Green, the wide men and the strike didn't do much. So the players that were replacing injured players did their jobs. The rest of the team didn't. And we'll go aggressively, and I'm far from pleased. Uh, but morale will probably drop a little now. And luckily, we did get those results. Uh, because Oh, of course. Uh, we have played 15 games, and there's a lot of teams, basically everyone else, apart from Gladbach, who yeah, has to play their game. So potentially, Wolfsburg could overtake us. I don't want to be dropping a bit, uh, because we might slowly be pushing down. <laughs> and our great start to the season is not looking as great as it was. So, lads, we have to end this episode uh, shortly, but I do want to continue until we know what is going to happen with these transfers. So, I'll go on that. And with the training, I'm going to go back to uh, attacking because we've got home games coming up, and that seems... So, I work defensive, uh, defensive positioning and all of that, just... It doesn't do much, unfortunately. So we've got Schalke at home. That's going to be an important game because uh, they're starting to push up a little bit. Uh, and then we've got Wolfsburg. So, yeah, we do have good games, or not good game, important games to get results in. I just want to see. I want to get these uh, transfers confirmed and so you guys actually know if we're going to have money to play with, how much we're going to actually have to play with and all of that. So I want to... Can I browse this for a minute? And can I stop? Hoffenheim manager gets sacked. Well, 
Uh, there you go, as you probably would accept. I uh, see they've gone back to last now. <laughs> uh, but what I want to do is, because we've still got 75% of transfer revenue. That's what I was wondering, like, how much money we'll actually get. I could, I'm not sure if we could request more. Yeah, we can't, because I did that, yeah, earlier in the season. So, yeah, that's not terrible if we get 75% um, of the players we sell. Because I want some to go in the overall balance. I want it to go in the overall balance, obviously. So I don't want to spend too much of it. But if a good player becomes available... But the thing is, we do have a pretty big squad. So I want to be maybe selling a few others. Well, a few. Yeah, who would I sell? That's the question. But yeah. We've got to be looking to improve the team as a whole. And make sure, at the same time, finances are in a good stead. So there's the first player confirmed. It's all a done deal now. We'll accept that. And Romain uh, Bredgerai is going to be leaving. We get 500k from that. Uh, so I'm happy. <laughs> we can get the money for him. And do you think, yeah, should we make a move in January? What kind of player do you think we're missing? And keep in mind when the injuries all come back and everything like that. Take a look where we are in the league. We're 11th. Oh, you got you got to still be happy. You got to still be happy, but I'm, I'm really, that's why I did want to accept the contract when I did and I was happy because I know, yeah, Bayern Munich, yeah, it would have been hard to get a win and still a possibility to lose against Gladbach away from home, two away games in a row, a lot of travel, so that makes it harder and Gladbach is still a decent team, they got, they got okay players. Uh, so that money, see, we get, yeah, 375k into the transfer budget, we don't get it all, but this is what I don't get. Our overall balance went down. Imagine how much it it would have went down if we didn't just get that money for a player. Imagine that. That's, that's scary to think, isn't it? So I'm not sure what quite to do there, whether I increase the transfer budget or not, put it more in the wage budget, and maybe we'll just have to go for, maybe look for some approach to signs. And yeah, we'll see. And we'll see what happens with Hinterseer as well, because we definitely, just for the overall balance um, of the club, uh, we need that money. And apparently we could lose De Costa. Is this contract running out 19 months? It's it's not the end of this. I'll worry about it maybe come the end of the season. His contract's not running out at the end of this season. And there we go, guys. Lucas Hinterseer will be moving on to Schalke. That's an interesting move. We do get the a million uh, into the bank now. So that's very, very good. The question was, though, because his contract is running out, he didn't want to listen to a new contract when we offered him a contract. Uh, when you look at his attributes, you look at the mentals and physicals, and they're all targeted there. Obviously, that's with his role, defensive forward. That's why he was the best there. But I just felt, yeah, technical attributes, and I guess that showed. It, it really did, didn't it? I remember him just misplacing passes, missing chances. Uh, but, yeah, I'm happy. It was just a little bit under his value, though, the million, because... Yeah, they could have got him for free not too long after. But you think about it, Schalke, they're probably, yeah, they are. They're a better team than us. So he moves to a better team. But the reason for me selling him, it's a little bit because he didn't want to listen to his new contract and he would have left for free, but he just didn't perform for us. So that's there as well. So would that be a good shine, a good signing for Schalke? Don't really know. He was wanted by 25 teams and not like really low teams or anything like that as well. So uh, we'll continue one more day so we can see that money uh, reflected in our balance, uh, like I mentioned. So Kachunga, oh, perfect timing. Kachunga's back. Fantastic. So we'll put him back on his best training again. What was it? Well, it's funny, he's defensive forward as well. All these players, best role defensive forward, but nah, complete forward uh, for Kachunga. And his composure is the one we want to be working on. That's the training we had set up when he was banging in goals before he got injured. Got friendly proposals accepted there as well. Uh, so that's all good. Oh, we have friendlies uh, to That's good. So the players, yeah, that's smart. So the players can still maintain some good match fitness. Uh, before the upcoming uh, games uh, that, with that little break. Nah, uh, that's that's good. Uh, that's smart. So we do get one... See, a lot of that... Now our balance of the transfer balance, anyway, transfer budget is 1.12 million. That That is good, yeah? Uh, I think that's a good amount. And then available wage budget is 31.5k, though. You think about that, you got to see who's available. So we will do that... At the time, right now, we won't because we can't actually make a move. The players don't leave right now. So, yeah, we just got to wait. We just got to wait and see um, how that is going to work. But, yeah, leave your recommendations maybe for one big signing. So, for an example, I'll just go search and maybe a player that would be 
worth around a mil. Maybe a transfer listed player, so it could be an easy ish signing to make. And you'll, who's Terence Boyd from USA? He's a striker, but again, he's not, he's not a guy that's going to be absolutely amazing. And maybe someone. How about? Oh, his list. This is we're looking at loans. We're on, we're on the wrong side of the world here. Want to be look at transfer listed players? There we go, transfer listed, and those there could be potentially someone you'd like to think an attacking player. How about Sylvain Marvo? He's a guy. Well, if I was Newcastle, I'm not sure about him. <laughs> I'd probably want to sell him. But asking price exactly what? Well, it's a million, but obviously coming from a Premier League team that's got a decent amount of money as well with Newcastle. Not obviously like a top four team, but they're still they're not poor. Uh, they can offer like 40k wages to someone like Marvo, so that's something uh, we've got to think about as well. So yeah, just all of these players, and these are just transfer listed players as well. You look at someone like Mauro Zarati, uh, he's a fantastic player. He's a guy I'd love to have, but unfortunately they want 3 million, so kind of out of our uh, price range, unfortunately. But yeah, well, what's his wages like as well? He's on 40k, we don't even have that. <laughs> uh, so yeah these are just a few options I'm throwing out there or I'm just showing you and maybe you could think about yeah we could make a move for any of these players and they, again these are just trans listed players uh, we've got this guy scouted or is it Alagui again he's not terrible but when this money this has to be like a key signing for us who would probably come in as one of our it's hard to say one of our better players if you have to sign them for a million but uh, that's the truth at the same time but I'll take off that, and then I'll just uh, show you some... I don't want to go... I know all these youngsters, like Christopher Aja, and these guys are good young players with potential. I want someone that can make an impact. How about Mirko Ivanovic? Or Ivanic? Yeah, Ivanovic. Ivanic, sorry. Yeah, Mirko Ivanic. He's a good passer. And he looks all right. Estimated cost. That's right in our price range. Could he be someone we need? But you look midfield center there, how about attacking midfield a bit better, but Hintasi was better apparently by his rating. But yeah, these are just a few options. These are just options we have scouted and everything like that. This is, I remember this guy, yeah, Luis Ramirez, when I was searching for players, he's got some decent attributes. Uh, his contract actually runs out at the end of the year, not season, at the end of the year. Um, could we get him on a free transfer? Yeah, and then we'd get him in January. Yeah, in January we would get him. So, uh, nah, yeah, I'm definitely going to have at least a bit more of a look of it. I'll get another scout report. But for me, as a free signing, how much would he want again? It's just, well, well, he does want a bit more. Maybe we can lower that a little bit. Any other teams want him? No one else. So, to me, he's a legit guy to go for. A good opportunity. You go to report the other reports anyway. He can play attacking midfield on the right side, yeah? He could be a real option to play. He's natural in three positions, and all three positions we play... He's better than Jose Carlos, Stefan Lex, really good. Then how about as attacking midfield center? He would be better than Hintasia was. Pretty good. Then midfield center, yep. Yeah, as good as Gross. Well, I think, God, this guy, 100%. And he's only got, no, yes, definitely no bad cons. He's just unlikely to improve and need to learn the language. Yeah, both not really major. Learn the language maybe a little bit, but there's not like he's not like injury prone. His contract expires in 21 days. Yeah, I'm definitely going to still survey my options, but this guy is a real consideration for me. It looks like a great signing that will be on a free transfer and wages are, yeah, within what we have. And we could still, yeah, keep that money to go for someone else as well. Real, he's the exact kind of signing I think we need, probably just to replace Hintasir, if anything. So, guys, that will be the end of this episode, finally. It's been a bit of a big one. I uh, got a couple games. I signed a new contract at the beginning of the episode. A lot of stuff going on, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Maybe drop in the comments if you enjoy these kind of episodes where just, there's a lot of information. It's not just the games, just everything. Just everything happening. Uh, it's really exciting. But I hope you guys did enjoy it. Don't forget to drop a like on the video if you would like to see some more. And I'll see you guys in the very next one.